Therefore, the most important point which I want to make is that when we ponder over Quran and we try to understand it, we should have two levels of understanding of each and every ayah. First of all, we have to keep the ayat or the surahs in the context, the historical context, when they were revealed, to whom they were revealed, who were the first addressees of the Quran, to whom Quran was talking primarily, what were, were their ideas, what were their beliefs, what were their customs, what were their rituals, everything has to be in the context. Geo-historical context that we call in the term of the exegesis of the Quran Tawilul Khas with the special you know perspective of the time when they were revealed people who were being directly addressed if we replace the ayah or the surah in that context and then we try to understand what was the meaning of this ayah or surah which the people understood at that time at that particular moment in history and secondly, because this Quran is meant for the whole of humanity, for all times to come. It was not sent only for the Arabs. It was not sent only for the Christians or the Jews of the times of Muhammad wasallam, but the whole humanity. So actually we have to understand the Quran secondarily in a generalized way. That is called the Tabilul Aam. Look to the words, what they mean, and just don't keep them bound with the background, historical background. Take it away from that background. And as such, you think over them, ponder over them, dive deep into their meanings, and try to generally infer from it the total and the final and the eternal guidance that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has provided for the humanity at large. Now, lastly, the sequence of Quran, Quranic surahs in the Mus'haf that we read and recite and the sequence in which is was revealed, these two are absolutely different. The sequence of revelation and the sequence of the Mus'haf, the book that we have, these two sequences are absolutely different. And as we know, the Makki surahs Basic, basic principle is that they were revealed at Makkah. They were revealed earlier than the Madani Surahs. But we find in the Quran, in Mus'haf, that the four Madani Surahs, they are in the very beginning of the Mus'haf. Surah Al-Baqarah, Surah Al-Imran, Surah Al-Nisa, Surah Al-Maidah. Four longest Madani Surahs are in the beginning of the Quran. Although we know they were revealed after 12 years from the beginning of the Wahy. So the sequence of Mus'haf and sequence of revelation, they are different. Now we must understand how Quran was collected and how it was compiled. The collection and compilation of Quran, it was completed in three stages. First of all, the Quran was compiled in a sequence during the lifetime of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam through the guidance of, through the divine guidance of Hazrat Jibreel alayhi salatu wasalam. Whenever the ayat were revealed, the Prophet said to the people who were writing these ayat, there were certain people, certain companions, who were assigned the duty of writing them, Katibin Wahi, we call them, who, who used to write those ayat, that put these ayat after such and such ayat of this surah. The sequence was going on as they were revealed, not in the sequence of revelation, but in the sequence of this, this Musaf that we have today with us. And this compilation of the Quran was completed in the lifetime of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Some people have cast some doubt about it, but actually it's agreed upon, it's absolutely proven fact that the compilation of the Quran was complete during the lifetime of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and it was done by him. But it was only in the hearts of the people. It was not in the form of a book like this. It was not collected in a book. People had remembered the whole of the Quran. And that, that was with the sequence. And we know it from very confirmed traditions that in every Ramadan, Ramadan al-Mubarak this month, 
حضرت جبرائیل علیہ السلاۃ والسلام یوز ٹو کم اینڈ ریسائٹ دی قران اینڈ الونگ ود ہم حضرت محمد صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم ہی آلسو ریسائٹڈ ان دی سیم سیکوینس سو ایز قران واز بینگ ریویلڈ دی سیکوینس واز آلسو بینگ فکسڈ سائیڈ بائی سائیڈ اینڈ ان دی لاسٹ رمضان اف دی لائف اف محمد صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم دی ہول recitation of the whole of the quran was completed twice so that sequence of the surahs and ayat was completed and compilation was completed in the lifetime of muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam although there was no book form of this quran in the days of muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam but it was collected in the form of a book within two or three years after the death of muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam because we know it It was done during the caliphate of Hazrat Abu Bakr radiyallahu ta'ala and his period of caliphate is only two uh, years and a few months. So within this period, this was collected in Musaf also, in a book form also. And then thirdly, in the, during the time of the caliphate of Hazrat Osman radiyallahu ta'ala anhu, it was written down in a particular script. And that script we have now, this is called Rasm Osmani. This script was decided. by hazrat usman رضی اللہ تعالی عنہ but only script agreed upon script was also prepared and this was also within a quarter of a century of the death of muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam because you know hazrat usman رضی اللہ تعالی عنہ his period of caliphate is 12 years add to it the 12 years of hazrat abu bakr and hazrat umar رضی اللہ تعالی عنہما so actually before the completion of one fourth century after the death of muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam an agreed script was also prepared and now we have the copies of that script all over the world this is called ar rasul usbani radhiyallahu ta'ala an now a few words about the basic terminology about quran the unit of quran is called aya we don't call it a sentence we don't call it a verse some of the writers use this word for quran but as far as i think we shouldn't use it neither the, the word sentence nor verse we have to keep this word aya it's very unique aya means a sign or a symbol actually every aya of quran is a sign or symbol of the wisdom of allah subhanahu wa taala so we cannot substitute any other word in its place we have to keep it and because during this translation of the quran I'll be keeping this terminology. That is why I'm explaining in the very beginning. Ayat, ayat. But if ayat, you know, if there is full stop after that, we call it ayah. So these are fundamental things, you know. Ayah and ayat is the same, and the plural is ayat. Now ayat, you know, they are very small or so very large also. We have, you know, huruf mukattaat. They also go to make ayah. Hamim, it is ayah. Alif Lam Mim, it is ayah. Then Wal Asr, it is ayah. Inna Insan Al Fi Khusr, it is again an ayah. And then there are ayat in which you can have ten sentences. Ayatul Kursi, for example, a very big ayah, one of the biggest ayat of the Quran. So actually, these this these ayat, you know, they, they are not based on any grammatical. or any other logical on a principle of logic or grammar this is based on as muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam told us and we call it in this terminology tawqifi these umur these matters are tawqifi they are mauquf alay on the telling of muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam as he told we we accept it no reason no principle no logic no grammar now these ayat you know you may note here there are about 6666 there is some difference in number but round about 6500 ayat of the quran whole now these ayat second term is surah and the plural is suwar but you know this word is because it's not commonly used i'll be using the word surah and and surahs during this translation when we are translating into english and what is sura sura is not a chapter please note these terms are not applicable to the quran these terms which we use about the books generally sentences paragraphs 
There are no paragraphs in the Quran. Then there are no chapters. This is not chapter. Because you know for every chapter of a book, there must be a certain topic. And the, that topic should be discussed in that chapter alone. It shouldn't be repeated in the second chapter. Or again in the third chapter. But we find in the Quran that even the story of Adam and, and Iblis, it has been repeated in seven surahs of the Quran. So actually it's a unique book. It's not the common book as we know the word book, human books. This is a unique book in itself and it has its own compilation, its own style, its own terminology. So ayat, then the ayat are joined together in surahs. There are 114 surahs of the Quran. And these surahs, you know, are very small also. Three surahs are there who have only three ayat each. Walas, inna linsana lafi khus, illa ladina amanu amil salihati wa tawaswa bil haqqi wa tawaswa bil sabr. Surah is complete. In the same way, inna aqayna kal kawsar, fasalli li rabbika wal haq, inna shaniya ka huwa labtar. Surah is complete. And on the other hand, we find Surah Al-Baqarah, 286 ayat. And among these 286 ayat, there are certain ayat which are so long that Ayat Al-Kursi is at least three times bigger than Surah Al-Asr. So actually these sizes are also dependent upon what the Prophet Sallallahu told us. These are Tawqifi Umur, not based on any logic, not based on any principle. The only principle is that the Prophet told us this is Surah Al-Baqarah. Starts from here and here. This is Surah al Ibrahim. Starts from here and here. It is small or large, big or small. It has nothing to do with any number, any size, any principle of grammar. But as far as the contents are concerned, there are principles. Every Surah has a central theme. And all the ayat of that surah, they are connected with that central theme, logically. They are absolutely logical relationship. But you know, not as we find in our chapters. It's a complete in itself, self-sufficient in itself. Then one point please note, and that is, most of the surahs of the Quran are in pairs. Surah Al-Baqarah, Surah Al-Imran, a pair. In the same way, we, the, the Musaf ends with, very similar to each other. That's a pair. In the same way, the same thing being discussed in both the surahs. Addressing Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam personally. It's a pair. Very apparently a pair. In the same way, Ya Yuhal Muzzammil, Ya Yuhal Muddassir, Ya Yuhal Muzzammil, Kubilla ila ila qalila. Ya ayyuhal muddassir, qum fa'anzir. It is again a pair. So most of the surahs of the Quran are in pairs. Although there are surahs which are not in pairs. They are unique. They are munfarid. And most of such surahs are very important. But actually this, we shall be referring to these things during our translation. That is why I want to acquaint you with these basic terminology. Now these surahs, the big surahs have been divided into rukus. This division was not present at the time of the Prophet or during the days of the Sahaba. It was done later on during the Umayyad period. And by a person which is not liked but by many, and that is Hajjaj ibn Yusuf. He is the person who divided Quran, the bigger surahs of the Quran into rukus. Why? Because you know you can't recite the whole of Surah Al-Baqarah in one rakat. In the prayer. So there must be portions. So can you can recite them in your prayers. So for that purpose, one ruku for every rakat. The, 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 the root is the same. Raka, ruku, rakat, and ruku. All these things, what are? One rakat, you, you can recite one ruku. So that one subject is discussed in one ruku. So this was done later on. But it was not present in the days of the Prophet or of the companions. In the same way, then the whole of the Quran was divided into 30 parts, which we call parad and parts in Quran. This division also was done later on, and we don't know when it was done. 
but it definitely was not present in the days of the Prophet ﷺ or of the companions. This was to facilitate the Muslims so that every Muslim can read and recite one para, one part of the Quran every day so that each month he completes one recitation of the whole of the Quran. But these two words, these two terms, rukus and paras or parts, they were introduced later on. They were not present during the days of the Prophet ﷺ or of the companions. But then, you know, another word which we find in Ahadith, that is Hizb. The surahs of the Quran, they were grouped in such a way that Quran was divided or divisible into seven nearly equal parts, not exactly equal. Some Hizb is more than five paras. First, first Hizb is more, more than five paras. Some is less, because you know if you divide thirty parts, into, and you divide into seven, you know, so what will come? About four and a half in each, but we have somewhere it is four and a quarter, somewhere it is about four, somewhere it is more than five as I have told you. But the beauty is, and this word was present during the time of the Prophet ﷺ, because people who had more love for Quran, they used to complete the recitation of the Quran in every week. So they had to divide Quran in seven parts so that they can complete the recitation of the Quran in one week, seven days. So we find the beauty is that the surahs are complete. They are not broken in this division into ahzab or manzil as we call it in, in Urdu generally. Manzil and the ahzab, this is the Arabic word mostly used. We have three surahs in the first. If you leave alone Surah Al-Fatiha, which is the preface of the whole of the Quran, then three surahs, Surah Al-Baqarah, Surah Al-Imran, Surah Al-Nisa, one manzil, one hizb, then five in the next, seven in the next, nine in the next, eleven in the next, and eleven, thirteen in the next, and then sixty-five surahs in the seventh hizb. That is also a multiple of thirteen. Thirteen into five makes sixty-five. So actually there is a beauty, numerical beauty, as well as, you know, a gradual increase, 3, 5, 7, 9, 11, 13, and then 65. So this was also present, this division of the Quran into seven ahzab, or seven manazil, during the days of the Prophet ﷺ. Lastly, there is another grouping of these surahs. And incidentally, this is also in seven groups. These seven groups are groups of Makki and Madani surahs, we find in the Quran. One or two Makki surahs, then one or more Madani surahs, it becomes one group. Then two or three or one or two Madani Makki surahs, then some Madani surahs, second group. Then Makki, then Madani, third group. Again Makki, again Madani, fourth group. Again Makki, again Madani, and so on. There, these are also seven groups. We find in the first group, Surah Al-Fatiha is the only surah which is Makki. Only one. Then four longest Madani surahs. Surah Al-Baqarah, Surah Al-Imran, Surah Al-Nisa, Surah Al-Maidah. And this goes to make the first group. This is not first manzil. First group of Makki Madani surahs. Then we have two surahs which are Makki. Surah Al-Anam, Surah Al-Araf. Again two surahs which are Madani. Surah Al-Anfal, Surah Al-Tawbah. This is the second group. Then in the third group, we have 14 surahs which are Makki, starting from Surah Al-Yunus, ending with Surah Al-Mu'minun, and only one surah, which is Madani, and that is Surah Al-Nur. Then eight surahs which are Makki, again one surah which is Madani, Surah Al-Ahzab, so on. Then again 13 surahs which are Makki, and then three surahs, Surah Al-Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Surah Al-Fat, Surah Al-Hujrat, these are the Madani surahs. Then you know from Surah Al-Qaf till Surah Al-Waqiyah, they are the Makki Surahs. From Surah Al-Hadid to Surah Al-Tahreem, this is, these are the Madani 10 Surahs. And this is the sixth group. And finally, you know, it's nearly whole of it is Makki Surahs from Surah Al-Mulk to Surah Al-Ikhlas. Only the last two Muawazatain, they are the Madani Surahs. So these are also, and they are very meaningful. Every group has a central idea, central theme. 
and the aspects you know one aspect of settle that subject is discussed in the bakki surahs the other aspect of the same subject is discussed in the badri surah of the same group so this is the basic terminology because it will be repeated time and time again during my translation of the quran and when i want to explain what you know uh, is the uh, meaning of those ayat and surahs so this terminology is going to be repeated that is why i wanted to acquaint you with the basic terminology before we started